welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Well, a lot of farmers are seeding winter wheat around the country, and so it's time to talk about fall residual herbicide applications for that winter wheat. There are a few options now that we didn't have a few years ago, so we want to discuss those today. Well, anytime you're looking at field management choices, soil pH is very important. We'll discuss some things that you'll have to watch out for with soil pH and how to adjust it if your pH isn't quite right. Well, as always, we have a Weed of the Week to control. That's coming up later in the show. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. You've probably heard a lot of farmers talking about cover crops the last few years, so during our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about what is a cover crop. We've got a great example around our field day site where we have the big Ag PhD field day every summer. We plant wheat. We've got it, so we harvest the wheat just before the field day. We've got a nice area for people to walk when they're looking at the plots and this kind of thing. But as soon as people have left the field day, we're seeding a cover crop. And what we're trying to do is get something green and growing in the field really every day that we we possibly can during the year. We're trying to keep the microbes in our soil healthy. We're trying to control weeds out there. And then you think about all that foot traffic around our field day and really the vehicles as we're setting things up and so forth. We want to try and eliminate some problems out there like compaction. So there are many reasons why we may use a cover crop in a field. Okay, so with this cover crop, there's basically a crop that you're doing for cash. So farmers will call that a cash crop. But then with the cover crop, it's just to keep something growing out there. So Farmers can use it for livestock, for example. They might do some grazing, but typically farmers are either plowing it under or they're just killing it off later. And you say, well, what's really the point other than maybe what Darren was talking about with compaction? But here's one of the things we want you to understand. There are a lot of nutrients down in the soil. And one of our objectives as farmers is to try to get plants to pull some of those nutrients up and then when we kill off that cover crop, or when it dies off in the winter, or when it dies off naturally, those nutrients, a lot of times when that plant breaks down, they'll come available pretty quickly to the next crop. So that's why we like putting different species out there. So like on our farm, we use turnips or radishes as one of the cover crops in our cover crop blend. We don't normally plant turnips or radishes, totally different species. So maybe they have a little bit better access to some of the nutrients in the ground. They pull them up, make them more available for the next crop. Here's the thing I think about with cover crops. Really the number one purpose is controlling where that soil is at. We want to prevent soil erosion. We don't want to have wind erosion. We don't want to have water erosion. So if you've got rolly ground or if you have even flat ground in an area where you get lots of rainfall, we want to have something there protecting the soil. When you have a plant growing, then when it rains, the water droplets are gonna bounce off the leaves of the plant, and by the time they hit the ground, uh, they aren't gonna hit the ground very hard. If you've got droplets falling from thousands of feet in the air, when they hit soil, those tiny little soil particles are going to explode, and you see soil just bouncing all over when rain droplets hit it directly. Think about it when you water your garden. You don't just put the garden hose on the soil and let the soil just go everywhere. Uh, typically, you've got a nozzle that's going to spread out the water, like a shower head, kind of, to lighten that load so you don't have big, hard droplets hitting the soil. With cover crops, that's what we're doing. So we're protecting the soil from washing away, and also we're just protecting it from the wind blowing, too. Well, one of the big things that we talk about in Ag PhD all the time is weed control. One of the purposes of cover crops is to try to choke out weeds, because as good as herbicides are, as good as tillage can be, don't ever forget that the best weed killer out there is just having a good cover. If we can shade out the ground, it prevents future weeds from coming. The other big thing I talk to people about with cover crops is trying to build your soil organic matter. You want something growing, you want roots growing down in the ground, because while people think organic matter comes from the above ground growth, most of it doesn't. It comes from below ground roots decaying in the future. When those decay, then that helps build our soil's organic matter. And having good organic matter levels is really important if you want to have a great future crop. One last thing you may be thinking about cover crops as well, doesn't it cost money to seed a crop? It certainly does, and it does cost money to seed a cover crop, depending on what a farmer is putting Most out there. Most people are spending 15 to 20 bucks an acre. Yeah, it's going to cost them a little bit of money. There's no question about it. And you say, well, okay, what kind of short-term gain is there if you're not harvesting that crop? 
Well, there may not be a short-term gain that, well, I'm going to make more money this fall by having a cover crop out there right now. But what we're talking about is the long term. I look at just the farm ground that Brian and I are farming. We're farming our great grandpa's land. So we're the fourth generation on this same field. So we aren't looking at our fields as, how are we going to make more money next year? And that's our only driver. No, our driver is, hey, how do we bring our kids back into this operation? And how do we have this land in better shape for our kids and hopefully even our grandkids someday to have the opportunity to farm it and have that ground be productive? So for the long term health of the soil cover crops are good now in the short term as brian was mentioning if cover crops can make nutrients more available if they can protect that soil we should get a short-term gain as well the other big thing that we stress to farmers is making sure you have a blend with your cover crops so we don't want to just seed one cover crop we're real big on we want at least three different species we'd like to have a grass a broadleaf and a broadleaf that's a legume that helps produce nitrogen for the next crop so we're really looking at blends and some people are even doing five-way six-way ten-way blends blends. We're really big on blends for cover crops and just cover crops in general are tremendously important. They've gained a lot in popularity in the last few years. Well, one weed we may be trying to keep out of our field by having a cover crop is our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee SDS application system. Hagi STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagi rep today. Looking to maximize yield? Quick Roots from Monsanto BioEgg is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more, and is applied to the seed so the live microorganisms go right to work enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Get Quick Roots today. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Stop coring your bins with the AgriDry Gravity Grain Spreader. Traditional bin filling systems create uneven concentrations of grain and fine particulates. Uniform grain distribution allows even airflow throughout the entire bin, giving you more control over temperature and moisture content, increasing your grain quality and bottom line. Call us today for more information. Dry Load Store, one 855 I've been involved in developing new technologies in agriculture for over three decades. The changing times demanded that we develop new and better equipment. Dry powder applications on seed can only be highly successful if they can be easily, effectively, and accurately applied to the target. That's where our company, Changing Times, and CT applicators come into the picture. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, soybean inoculants, or other dry products. Remember, CT applicators for the changing times. Regalia RX Biofungicide activates a plant's natural defense system, limiting the effects of disease and improving overall plant health. Regalia RX complements your fungicide program to optimize yield and strengthen return on investment. Ask your retailer for Regalia RX today. Most wheat farmers in the country have never used a pre-emerge herbicide before, and we just think it's incredibly important. I don't care what crop you're raising, corn, soybeans, or even wheat, even when we're talking winter wheat, having a good residual herbicide can be really important if you want great weed control. The thing is, you gotta decide right away, are we after grasses? Or are we after broadleaves? Because there are some different products depending on what your target wheat is. Well, if you're planting winter wheat, a big key to being successful is getting a good stand established and not having all kinds of weed competition out there stopping you. So for me, I just look at the broadleaf weeds right off the bat and say, all right, I've got a broadleaf weed problem. Maybe it's kochia. For a lot of farmers in wheat, they say, what can I do to stop kochia? Okay, that's a real tough one. But there are also areas of the country that are fighting other broadleaf weeds. The best broad spectrum broadleaf herbicide that I know 
cattle of pre-emerge is sharpened. You can use a pretty good strong rate before wheat and you can get good residual through the fall and get you up until winter without having a broadleaf issue out in your field. Then when you look at having to spray different herbicides, you may be able to avoid some of the harsh herbicides like 2,4-D for example that gets used to control some of the tougher weeds in wheat. All right, with Sharpen you can go with an ounce rate. A lot of people do that. It's okay for burn down, but even there it might be a little bit weak. It's kind of a low rate. It's about five bucks or you can bump it up, spend 10 bucks an acre, you get better weed control and longer residual. Now you're not going to have residual all the way until next July or anything like that, but you're going to have good residual to get your wheat started this fall. And once you get that great stand established, then your wheat crop itself is going to choke out a lot of weeds. All right. So broadleaf weeds are one thing, but let's face it. Most of the concern in a grass crop like wheat is how do I control the tough grasses? Maybe I've got cheat grass out there, or maybe I just have heavy foxtail pressure. Could be jointed goat grass. There's a number of different grass weeds that are problems in different wheat growing areas around the country. And so we think about a lot of those products that get used post emerge. Well, for the tough grasses, it's almost all ALS herbicides. So when we think about a pre emerge herbicide, if you can use something other than an ALS, that would be a nice option. There is a relatively new herbicide that's out called Zidua that's from the group 15. So instead of being a group one or a group two, uh, where most of the grass herbicides in wheat are from, we actually can use a group 15 now, which would be a similar group or a similar product to what are being used in cornfields around the country. So the advantage to this again is we've got a different mode of action. And yes, it might not be this group 15 Zidro, might not be completely lights out on all your grasses, but it is pretty good on many grasses and it does have some activity on many different broadleaves. So if you can kind of change things up, especially if you're in a continuous wheat rotation, this is probably a good way to go. All right, the other ones that we talk about for pre-emerge herbicides, we get a lot of ALS type products. A real common one that's being used that's pretty inexpensive is called Prepare. It's basically the chemistry that's in Everest, just without a crop safener because you're putting it out pre-emerge on the soil. Prepare does a good job on some non-ALS resistant broadleaf weeds, but mainly we're putting it out there for grass weeds. It has suppression on cheatgrass, so don't wait till next spring. You have to get that cheatgrass and tough winter annual grass control done now. One last thing I guess I'd mention is make sure you have a good burn down. You want to start clean, so you might have to use Roundup. You might have to throw in one of these other herbicides that we just talked about, whether it's Sharpen to help with the burn down or Prepare. Zidua doesn't have any burn down activity, but you certainly could throw that in with a Roundup if you wanted to. But again, the real key here is trying to get these weeds under control. Now we want a good good burn down, a good pre-emerge herbicide, follow post-emerge in your winter wheat, possibly even this fall if you need to, just do everything you can to end up with the best crop possible next spring. Now one of the weeds that you may be after controlling in your wheat fields is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. We've been dealing with AgriLiquid a little over seven years. I was skeptical, to be honest, but I watched the results from several clients. Those results were increased production and reduction in input cost. With AgriLiquid, we saw an increase in the size of the initial root mass. For ranchers, that means forage production a lot quicker. AgriLiquid works. The bottom line is profitability. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly. Spring or fall, the Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. There are no marks of conflict lining this landscape. No echoes of economic hardship. Just the unmistakable murmur of Mother Nature's hand. In the perennial quest to outperform, ensure your crop gets the nutrients it craves with a Vail Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. Nothing helps protect your investment more so you can grow confidently no matter what comes your way. A Vail, hold your ground. It's a humble idea. Use a biological process to turn a plant into a power source. From that idea came the first Poet Refinery. One biorefinery in one town turned into 27 facilities in 27 towns, creating new local jobs, producing hundreds of millions of gallons of ethanol, 
and providing renewable products around the world. Suddenly, that one little idea seems a whole lot bigger. See the world differently with Poet. Lost time and spilled product cost your farm money. The AgriLite conveyor system has one of the fastest product transfer speeds on the market with virtually no spillage. Over 10 feet of horizontal swing gives you the ability to dispense product with precision and eliminates any need to reposition. AgriLite conveyors are designed with ease of maintenance in mind and allows for complete installation or removal in less than an hour. Designed to save you what your farm needs most, time and money. AgriLiteTrailers.com Lightweight, efficient, dependable. When you get your soil test results this fall, the very first thing we want you to take a look at is soil pH. Over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about going through an entire soil test, but where it all starts is soil pH. This is the most important thing on the soil test because I don't care what you do with all the rest of your stuff. If your soil pH isn't right, nothing else is going to work as well as it should. No other fertilizer, no other weed control, nothing. You've got to try to get your soil pH right over a period of time. All right, so let's look at soil pH pH and look at the high and look at the low and what we need to do with that soil pH and then just think about whether it's high or low. If it's low, it's very acid and our little microbes in the soil don't work very well and nutrients get tied up. When it's very high, it's on the alkaline side. Well, it's the same thing. Our soil microbes don't work as well and nutrients aren't available. When we get that pH in the middle, all of our nutrients become more available for our crops. So magically, by solving that soil pH issue, we get more nutrients in our crop and we have better, healthier crops. We also have all those soil microbes that are breaking down residue, that are breaking down herbicides. So you don't have herbicides carryover. All those good things happen when we get that soil pH neutralized. At our Ag PhD soils clinics each winter we like to show this slide from Midwest Labs that basically talks about how much percent of yield you can expect to get if your soil pH is low. So what this means for example is if I've got a soil pH of 5.7 and let's say the number says 73 percent that means I can only achieve 73 percent of my yield potential at that 5.7 pH. So I've given up 27 percent of my yield before the year ever even starts. That's no fun. I don't like looking at that kind of chart. I want to get my soil pH right. Most crops like 6.3 to 6.8 for a pH, but there are certainly some crops that like just a little higher soil pH. With corn, soybeans, and wheat, we're talking 6.3 to 6.8. If we can have our soil pH in that range, that's pretty ideal. Now we have the best nutrient availability, we have the best environment for the soil microbes, we have the best environment to grow great crops. All right, let's talk about moving that soil pH. Let's take the easy one first. If you have a low soil pH, moving that up is relatively easy, but it's going to cost a little money and take a little bit of effort. So the way to solve a low soil pH is to add lime. That's it. We add lime, it helps bring that pH back up. There's a chemical reaction that happens in acid soil. Acid soil has too much hydrogen. When we put on lime, it's calcium carbonate. And the resulting equation or, or the result of that chemical reaction is the hydrogen combines with some of the oxygen to make water. Then the carbon combines with some of the oxygen to make carbon dioxide and then that leaves free calcium. All three of those things help feed our crop. So the calcium our crop needs, the carbon dioxide our crop needs, and of course water our crop is going to use as well. If your soil pH is high, it's usually the result of one of two things, either poor drainage or you've lost your topsoil. So with the poor drainage, get tile in the ground. Over time, you'll flush the salts out. You will lower your soil pH. We've done it on our own farm. In the event that you have lost topsoil, you've got to try to build new topsoil, and that doesn't come easy. But we suggest planting crops with lots of roots, like corn, using good nitrogen levels and good overall fertility and building your soil over time, you absolutely can do it, but you're going to need to reduce your tillage and you're probably going to try to want to get manure out there as much as you possibly can. I mean, don't overdo it obviously, but use manure, use crops with lots of roots and reduce your tillage, even go no-till. Also, you might want to use cover crops to try to keep stuff growing out there all the time. Just don't forget that, hey, when I have lots of roots, roots produce organic acids. They will try to lower your soil pH for you. So the crops can do the job as long as you feed those crops well. The other thing about getting that soil pH right is sometimes it discourages weeds from growing in our field. Even if you have this weed growing in your field, we'll show you how to stop it coming up next. 
The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. You may recognize our Weed of the Week as dandelion. And you say, oh, that's a problem in yards, and I can use 2,4-D amine or one of those yard weed killers, and I can take care of dandelion with a timely application. Yes, you're right, and if you have dandelion in your yard, kill it in the fall, and then try again in the early spring if you see some more coming back. Hey, even if you don't see spring. it, even if you don't see it, you've got to spray in the fall and in the spring. People that want to only do one or the other, they typically have dandelions coming back, so make sure you spray a good, strong rate, the maximum label rate in the fall, repeat it again in the spring. We talk about it at this time of year because as soon as the leaves drop off the trees, as soon as your wife's flowers are done for the season, then you go hit your lawn hard. Okay, well that's nice. Yards are fine and yeah, I don't like it out there. It's kind of an eyesore and your neighbors certainly don't like it, that kind of thing. So yep, it's good to get it under control in your yard. But let's say that you have dandelion out in your fields. It is tough to control. Dandelion gets this great big root underneath it. It takes a very strong rate of many herbicides to control it, and there aren't a whole lot of choices choices to control dandelion. So let's focus on dandelion control in fields. All right, if I'm gonna use Roundup, you've gotta do it a week or two before the first hard killing frost. So if by the time you harvest your crop and then you say, oh, I wanna go spray dandelions, but you know what, I had my first hard frost last week, don't even waste your money on Roundup, you're just wasting your time. Switch to Banville if you're gonna plant corn next year or 2,4-D if you're gonna plant soybeans next year, use the maximum label rate. And this is a lot. I mean, we're talking a quart of Banville, we're talking multiple quarts of 2,4-D most likely, but hit it hard and then you've got the best chance that it's going to die itself because of winter kill in the winter if you didn't kill it yourself. All right, if you're laughing right now, I'd say, wait a minute, you're talking about dandelion? That's not that big a deal. It's and the if worst I see one or problem two, in no-till in a lot of areas. It's a huge, huge problem. So if you do see a few of them out there, make sure you wipe them out because you're going to have a big problem in just a couple of years if you let them go. All right, if you have this weed come up again in the spring, try to hit it with a good strong burn down. Otherwise, if you're in corn, you can use Status. That's our favorite product. But in soybeans, it's really tough. You've got to use the maximum labeled rate of Roundup if you're raising Roundup beans, Liberty if you're raising Liberty beans. Otherwise, in conventional beans, we just don't have any good answers for dandelions. All right, well, our weed of the week is dandelion. Make sure you stop it because not only is it an eyesore, it can be a very problematic weed. Well, that's it for our weed of the week, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect only from Case IH. piece of equipment that got a lot of attention at the Ag PhD Field Day was our chopping corn head. It's been such an important piece of equipment on our farm, and Brian says he will never raise corn without a chopping corn head again. I'll explain how we picked the one that we use in today's Iron Talk. There are four main criteria we use to pick the right chopping corn head for us. Number one, get a head that's designed as a chopping corn head from the beginning. We didn't want a bolt-on or added-on component approach. Getting even feeding of the plant through the header is critical to even residue distribution. Number two, we wanted a 12-row header, and having one that folds is a must for our operation. This saves so much time. It's easily a half an hour to an hour savings each time we move from one field to the next. This really adds up over harvest. Number three, minimal maintenance time. Our header has only two grease points on each row unit that need grease every 50 hours. And other than the PTO drive lines, the remainder of the 
head is seasonal maintenance only. Number four, durability. There's a big difference in many factors on a corn head when you look at the fine details, like how the deck plates are shaped. Ours, for example, have a rolled edge design, which should multiply wear life by as much as five times normal deck plates. It also has an upward beveled shape to pick the ear cleaner and minimize loss to shelling. There are many reasons you may choose a chopping corn head. There are big differences between brands, though, so do your homework before making that choice for your operation. It's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. With the success of the Case IH Tiger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. What if instead of running test plots on 10 acres, you could test on 10,000? With Farmers Business Network, the world becomes your plot trial. FBN is the independent farmer-to-farmer -farmer agronomic network. FBN connects real data from tens of thousands of fields and provides you trusted analysis on hundreds of seeds, practices, and field performance to maximize your profits. Find out how your field seeds and practices compare today by joining the FBN community at FarmersBusinessNetwork.com. Just $500 per year for unlimited acres. When you need one machine that can do it all, you send in a Spartan, your all-in-one forage solution from Capella USA. This direct cutting system is the right machine for almost any forage crop and gets everything done in a single pass, keeps your cost down. Always versatile, the Spartan can be configured to fit any self-propelled forage harvester in the world. So, no matter what you forage, send in a Spartan from Capella USA. Italian craftsmanship, American grit. At Titan Machinery, our shops are busy with a brand new program from Case IH, Certified Pre-Owned. We rigorously inspect each certified machine, which is covered by a 12-month powertrain protection plan. I use this CPO seal to give you peace of mind when buying a used Case IH tractor or combine. CPO units also qualify for special financing and rewards. We're adding more CPO equipment every day, but they'll have to meet my standards first. Certified, inspected, and protected from Case IH and Titan Machinery. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. We know that the future is liquid. That's how Agroculture Liquid Fertilizer creates the highest quality products on the market. Because we're committed to finding the best raw materials at the best price possible and getting them from us to you in the most sustainable, responsible ways possible. Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers, helping you grow the future. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications. From preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a quick till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune into the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us at 2 p.m. Central each weekday on channel 147. That's the Rural Radio Channel. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV program. We have an Iron Talk, Farm Basics, Weed of the Week, and much more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.
Plants actually tell farmers what nutrients they need. They don't do it verbally, but farmers get the information through plant tissue analysis. It's another way farmers practice responsible nutrient management. To learn more, visit rnmf.org.